Hello, my creepy crew. Ms. Story Mystery here with another collection of mysteries and oddities from around the web. This evening's episode includes a collection of tales, including an experience with spooky dolls, a ghostly roommate, and an old studio flat haunted by a youthful spirit. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these weird wonderings in episode 10 of Ms. Story Mysteries Creepy Tales of Mysteries and Oddities. Had a club retreat once back in high school over winter break. The club officers would go to a few cabins the club sponsor owned. Really pretty, forests and mountain views everywhere you looked. I was rather excited heading up, as it was pretty much my first experience in a cabin. First day was spent getting settled after the drive and preparing for some volunteering in the morning, cooking a breakfast in appreciation for a volunteer fire department. Soon enough, the day was over and everyone was headed to bed. As there weren't enough beds, a few people, myself included, had brought sleeping bags. I curled up in my bag and fell asleep. I wake up sometime in the early morning, around 1 or 2 a.m. I feel something fuzzy on me which, in my groggy and half-asleep state, I noted but didn't really focus on. It takes a few seconds for me to realize my sleeping bag is not fuzzy. I scramble around for my glasses and see the outline of some fuzzy doll on me. I panic a bit and fumble around in the dark for my phone's flashlight app. In the process, I must have hit the doll or something because it starts moving, making noise, and glowing its eyes finally find my phone and turn on the light to find there's actually two dolls near me. The fuzzy doll shaped vaguely like a gorilla and a porcelain doll that I hadn't noticed earlier. I almost peed myself and froze up until the fuzzy doll stopped moving, then threw both of them into the corner of the room, huddled there in the dark for a while, petrified, and wondered what was going on. Eventually, exhaustion took me, however, and I wake up later once everyone started moving out and about. Nobody knew anything about the dolls that had appeared, and the owners of the cabin hadn't a clue where they came from. Even more interesting was that some folks in the next cabin over had found another random doll, hanging by a noose in front of the doorway. Needless to say, I never went on that retreat again. I was about eight years old and slept on the top bunk of a bunk bed at the time, had a desk underneath, and one night I was complaining to my dad that my room was too hot. At one point I yelled, ugh, it's so hot, and instantly I heard a whisper from under my bed, so hot. I thought it was my brother messing with me, so I started to climb down and realized no one was there. Freaked me right out. At Christmas with the family, everyone's walking around chatting or helping with dinner. There's a group of about five of us standing in the entrance of the kitchen, which has a bar-style barrier separating it from the living room, dining room. My aunt comes over and asks if we have seen her wine glass, and my uncle points to it sitting on the bar, says, there it is, and the glass blows up. This glass was sitting four feet away from anybody, not anywhere near the stove, and had been there for 10 to 15 minutes. We all saw it, and our best guess to what happened is my uncle has some sort of telekinetic powers. He's no longer allowed to point to any of us, and any glassware breaking from then on has been blamed on him. One time, there was a birthday balloon that kept coming into my room somehow, so I put it in my sister's room. Ten seconds later, the same balloon flew back into my room. To get from her room to my room, the balloon must have flown towards the door, turned left, and head out of her door, turn left again, and head down the hallway into my room. I tried to recreate the situation by putting the balloon in my sister's room, and there was no breeze. The balloon wasn't even moving when I tried to debunk this. I'm not sure if this was paranormal, but this definitely was no breeze. I still have this one experience burned into my memory from when I was around seven or eight. I woke up in the middle of the night to find my mother standing over my bed, though she was a bit blurry and kind of glowing pink. Once I realized she was there, I asked if she could get me a glass of water. 
I then remember turning to look at my glowing balloon Winnie the Pooh nightlight to look for the cup that was usually next to my bed. I turned back to hand it to her, but she was still standing there motionless. So I asked again, Mom, can I have a cup of water? But she continued to just stand there staring at me. So I started to shout, Mom, Mom, Mom! When in burst my mom from my bedroom door, wearing a long one-size-fits-all Garfield sleep tee. What? What's wrong? Just as she burst through the door, the pink glowing version of my mom faded from her head down to under my bed. Well, it also just so happened that I had lost a tooth that very same day. So, in my little mind, I had just witnessed the Tooth Fairy. And... To cement my claim, my dollar bill the Tooth Fairy had left me was found deep under my bed. I told everyone I knew that I had seen the elusive legend. It wasn't until years later when I was retelling the story that I had realized that the Tooth Fairy only happened to look like my mother because it was actually my grandmother who had passed long before I was born. She also looks a lot like my mom. So... Once I put it all together, there was no doubt that the figure looked exactly like images I've seen of her later in my life. To top this all off, when my daughter was around four, she told me that sometimes she'd wake up to see Nana, my mom, watching her sleep. Yep, still doing that. I'm in the shower, home alone. As I'm showering, something falls lands on the top of my head and sits there. I tilt my head to get whatever it is that has fallen there off, and a penny falls off and hits the shower floor. I pick it up and think to myself, that's odd, there's no place for a penny to have fallen from, and continue about my day. A couple days later, when I'm telling this story to my mom, I realize how freaky it is, and it absolutely terrifies me. At the time, though, it didn't bother me at all. This isn't the only odd thing that happened in that bathroom, either. My mother used to yell my name in a long, drawn-out manner to get me to do my chores as a child. Somehow, my effing cat learned how to mimic the call. The first time the cat called my name, I nearly had a mental breakdown. The cat was outside and called me by name to let her in. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I ran up the stairs and hid in my room. Until I realized the cat was not possessed, and then I just let her in. Creepy cat. I used to give my dog an old cricket ball to play with, and one day I was out in my garden watching him play with it. I turned my back for a second to get something out of the shed, when all of a sudden the cricket ball flew from behind me and slammed into the shed about a foot away from my head, leaving a sizable dent in the shed. The only other person in the garden was my mom, who was on the other side of me, so couldn't have thrown it. I don't know if I would say the only possibility is paranormal, but it was damn weird. I've had several dreams similar to what I am posting. I've been a caver in Florida for about 13 years, since I was about 6, and have been to a lot of caves. Never been afraid before this to go in one. When I was about 7 or 8 years old, I started having this reoccurring dream. I would have it at least twice a year, always the same, even though I would realize I was dreaming after the first few iterations. I would fall asleep and dream of being in a cave, and going into this little hole in the bottom. Inside, I would see a 10 to 15 foot long corridor about 2 to 4 feet high. At the end, it would always turn left, and I always saw a bent red stop sign at the end, like someone ripped off the top 2 feet and tossed it in, but I would always follow the corridor. I would turn and walk past the sign, despite being scared, despite many times knowing what was there and the corridor would start descending, quickly opening up into a large vertical chamber with a path leading down in a corkscrew. Everything became blurry at this point, but it was always the same. I saw trash, 
scattered on the walls. I saw the pit leading down to a curved floor. I saw things undefined, animals or people or something else at the bottom. And I saw my family, each with one of the things, being tortured and killed every time, and I could never do anything. After I saw that, I would be stuck for a few seconds until I felt more than saw everything turn and look at me, and I would wake up. Not like a normal dream where you just drift to consciousness or a nightmare where you bolt up in fear, but like something pushed me out, like I wasn't supposed to be there. So, I have this dream multiple times a year until I turn 15. My father decided to take us to some caves we never had been before, one of which was Dog Drop. It was likely named so because someone either threw their pet in there or a coyote fell in and the body was later discovered. Dog Drop had a roughly 30-foot rappel straight down to enter. I went down with my brother while my father waited up at the top. There was a hole in the ground. I started to feel uneasy, though I didn't know why. So, I followed my brother into the hole. I felt worse as I moved down. And when I looked up, I saw the same corridor, the same turn, the same wall the same bottles at the corner, and I instantly was hit with this overwhelming sense of nausea and fear and being watched and everything was screaming at me to leave. I froze and must have made some noise because my brother turned around and asked what was wrong. I managed to say I wanted to leave now and climbed out as quickly as I could, followed immediately by my brother. We packed up and left, never have gone back, and never will. Haven't told anybody what actually happened, just said I wasn't feeling well and they forgot pretty quickly. The thing that really makes it creepy for me is I have never had the dream again. Year after year I would have it consistently, but it just stopped after that. But I still remember it all. And I still feel afraid, almost an external fear when I think of it. Me and my friends were camping, and we built a little camp in the woods lit up by torches. It was getting late, and I was on the edge of the darkness, right where the torchlight dissipates, gathering some wood, when suddenly a rock hits me from the darkness. All night rocks were thrown of all different sizes and shapes, but only at me and my tent. There were three of us peering out into the darkness, shitting bricks as rocks got thrown all night long. We never heard footsteps, never any noises, except for the noises of rocks being thrown. There were rocks everywhere by morning, and we still have no idea where the rocks came from. Still get the creeps just talking about it. I see silhouettes of people walking around behind me on my television screen when it's turned off sometimes. One time I was sitting on my coffee table, and I turned off my television and got this unexplainable, eerie feeling. I started leaning to my left, and without taking my eyes off the screen, I saw something sitting directly behind me. I ran so quickly out of my mother's living room. I was driving home one night on a back road that goes through a desolate area. It was summertime, and it had rained that evening, so there were parts where it was kind of foggy. I was driving through this part in the road that you had to drive pretty slow through, almost a sharper S-curve, and it ran right next to an old, dilapidated farmhouse that had been abandoned for decades. I came through the curve and started to accelerate, when suddenly I thought someone was crossing the road. As I saw the figure, I screamed out, Oh shit! and slammed on the brakes. I braced myself for an impact, and the figure turned toward my car and looked me right in the face. It looked like an old man wearing overalls and a plaid shirt. My car came to a stop, and I was totally freaking out thinking I had just hit a pedestrian, but I didn't hear any sound from an impact. I got out of the car, no body laying in the street. Went and looked at the front of my car, no damage. 
I just got this strange sensation and jumped in my car really quick and drove home. Still makes the hairs on my arms stand up thinking about it almost 20 years later. The sun blinked while we were at the beach. It literally went dark for a split second. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, nothing flying overhead. I looked up and asked my friend what just happened. Neither of us could figure it out, and to this day, we don't tell other people because they don't understand. It was really strange. I came home after dropping my kids at their school, and my bathtub was full with hot water. Just a hot bath, no running water, filled just below the side drain, perfectly full. I ran as fast as I could out into my driveway, thinking some freak was in my house going to take a bath. I didn't know if I should call 911, but the conversation sounded so ridiculous to me. I called my then-husband and walked to the coffee shop to stare at a cup of coffee for an hour while he came home. He was thinking I was insane, until he went up to the bath, stuck his hand in, and it was still hot. He pushed the plug open and drained the water. And that was that. No evidence of anyone coming into the house, and the cat isn't that smart. Was staying the night at a friend's studio a few years back in an older house, a wooden building from the 1930s. She'd gone out of town for the evening and wasn't expecting to come back early, so at some point I went to sleep on the shared bed directly opposite the front door. Something woke me up in the middle of the night. I was still more than half asleep when I cracked my eyes to an open doorway with a dark silhouette of a girl standing there, backlit by the light from the corridor. Without fully waking up, I just assumed my friend had returned and closed my eyes again. When I opened them a moment later, the door was shut. There was no light from anywhere, nor was there anyone else in the flat. It must have been a dream. It felt strange, but I turned over to my side. I started to drift off again in the quiet, and then I felt the edge of the sofa sink a little under someone sitting down on it. The movement then turned into someone crawling very carefully on their hands and knees, across the sofa next to me, where they lied down and went still. I could hear their quiet, steady breathing, as well as feel their presence through closed eyelids. Something made me think it was a child, a girl. My heart was racing by that point because I fully knew I was alone in the room. Somehow, I managed to force myself to open my eyes and, surely enough, there was nothing but an empty space next to me. Even though terrified, I eventually drifted off to sleep again, and didn't wake up again until the next morning. My friend had stayed out all night, and I left before she returned, so didn't tell her the story of the invisible nocturnal visitor. Some time later, I shared my experience with a mutual friend, who steadily grew paler and paler while listening. She said that the owner of the flat had told her about having seen, or dreamed about, a small, ghostly girl in the flat a few times at night, asking to be protected from some other entity in the form of a malicious man. I still get goosebumps thinking about it, even though it was some four to five years ago. Not the situation itself, as it could have been written off as a dream, but the fact that two people had had the same experience makes it too real. I used to work at a place where I had access to the security camera footage. Every night at the same time and place, a ball lightning appeared. It moved around slowly for a few minutes and then disappeared. This lasted for a few weeks and never happened again. So when I was about 17 or 18, I was hanging out in my room on my computer at my desk with the door closed. How my room was set up at the time was I had a desk with the computer side horizontal to the wall next to a huge metal bookshelf. There I was, minding my business, when I heard a strange noise. I looked up for a brief second and watched the corner of my bookshelf 
slowly pull itself six inches away from the wall like someone was moving it. It freaked me out so much that I tripped over myself while running out of the room screaming. I have no idea how it happened. The bookshelf is completely covered in books, and I wouldn't be able to move it an inch unless I took everything off it. I now have a problem being alone in my room with the door shut because of it. When I was 14, I agreed to look after my neighbor's cats while they were away. They left me a key to their house, and I was supposed to go over once every day to feed the cats and check on them. But when I was walking over the following evening, I saw an older woman in one of the windows of the upper floor staring at me. I got a little confused and turned, walking back home, thinking that maybe I had mistaken the day or if they got someone else to check on the cats. The next day, same thing happened. I walked over again, and I saw the same woman staring at me from a window, but this time on the first floor. I called my neighbor then, and they got worried and told me to call the police because no one was supposed to be in there. I called, the police came, but the house was empty, except for the cats. I stayed in the house while the police left and fed the cats. I left soon after. I came over and fed the cats as I had promised, but the whole thing gave me the creeps. I never saw the woman again, but the cats refused to leave the living room. I woke up to see a black mass floating above the bed. It stretched out and formed a head that bent down and looked at me, though there were no eyes. I reached over and shook my husband awake, which made the black mass recoil up to the ceiling. My husband and I watched it glide around the room for five minutes or so before it disappeared. We slept with the lights on after that night. Same house, different night. I woke up from a nightmare. My husband talked to me and calmed me down, and after a few minutes, we laid back down to go to sleep. There was a minute of silence, and then a little girl's voice on the other side of the bedroom door said, Are you okay? Me and my husband both heard it and bolted straight out of bed. When I was around eight, I was at a sleepover with about ten other girls. We had this random idea to spread out all over the downstairs to sleep so that when the parents woke up, there would be kids everywhere. Most of the lights were off when I crawled under the kitchen table with my sleeping bag. I thought my eyes were still adjusting to the dim lighting, but I could see a white figure floating under the table with me. I continued to set up my sleeping bag, waiting for my eyes to adjust. Then another girl, right on the other side of the kitchen chair, says to me, What is that? What is what? I asked her. That white thing under the table with you. I pretty much shit my pants as we both screamed and huddled in the middle of the living room with the other girls for the rest of the night with the lights on. There was definitely nothing physical under the table with me. Still gives me chills thinking about it. When me and my sister were younger, I was around 10 and she was 7-ish, and my mom was driving us home from piano lessons. Things are going normal as per usual. And then we drive by the big cornfield near our house on a quiet street when my mom stops the car in the middle of the road and just looks at the cornfield. Me and my sister are both looking around like, uh, mom, what? She then proceeds to look terrified, run out of the car, and just freaks us the F out. It was so confusing. She comes back in totally fine like nothing had just happened and drives home. We both brushed us off as something not super important. Fast forward 10 years and me and my sister drive past the same place again and get that weird memory like we had forgotten it ever happened. Anyways, we asked my mom, and she actually thinks we're crazy. But I can't shake the feeling there was a little glitch in the system, and something weird happened. It just didn't seem like my mom. This happened two nights ago. My family and I are staying at a beach house right now over fall break. When we arrived, my parents let my little brother, his friend, and me pick out where we wanted to sleep. The two of them picked a room with twin beds, and I picked a small room with some interesting-looking gothic-y furniture. The first night, two nights ago, I couldn't sleep for whatever reason, and so I got up to get some water, maybe 1.30 in the morning. 
When I got back to my room, which was right across from the bathroom, I could have sworn I saw a little man with dirty brown skin, huge bugged out eyes, and tattered brown rags, maybe a foot tall, crouching next to my bed. He was staring at me. It only lasted a split second, and I might have imagined it, but it lasted long enough and was detailed enough that I'm not so sure. The next morning, my little brother and his friend switched to a different room. They said that they were creeped out by something, like there was something else in the room with them. We're heading home tomorrow. When I was a teenager, I found a pit bull that had a collar with tags. I brought him home and called the phone numbers on his tags. I didn't get an answer and eventually put him in my brother's room as he was gone for the night. My mom woke me up in the morning asking me if I had let the dog out. I hadn't, and she claims to this day that she didn't. The dog was just gone. My roommate and I are convinced we have a third roommate now. We've lived in another apartment that had really thin walls and floors, but our current place is nice. The only time I've heard our neighbors is when the kid above jumps up and down so his full weight slams down. The first occurrence we remember was when my roommate told me she'd been watching TV in her room when she heard me yell something down the hallway. She figured the dog had gotten in trouble or something, but then she heard me call her name. Thinking I needed help, she walked down the hall to my room just to find my dog asleep on the bed. I had been gone for a few hours running errands, and she had no idea I wasn't home. My own experience happened one evening after making dinner. I was eating in my room, watching TV, when I heard the front door close. A couple of footsteps, then my roommate's bedroom door creak open and close. I walked over to see if she wanted some dinner, but her bedroom door was open and she was gone. I sent her a quick text, asking if she had come home and then left really quick. She said she had still been at work and wouldn't be home for more than an hour. Lastly, my sister had slept over, and while I was finishing up work, I worked from home, she went to watch TV on the living room couch. She suddenly came back into my room, blanket wrapped around her, and a frightened look on her face. She'd been laying on the couch, playing games on her phone, when someone pushed a corner of the couch. I'd shrugged it off, thinking she probably fell asleep and her body jerked or twitched. But when I looked at the couch with her, you could see a mark in the carpet where the corner of it had moved where she felt. This was an old, heavy couch. It takes a lot to move it around. Unfortunately, our third roommate doesn't help pay rent. In high school, I parked on the street in front of my parents' house. So, to get to my car, I walked up the driveway, past this big tree stump in our front yard, and up to the street. One night, I was walking up to get something from my car, when I thought I saw something on the stump. I didn't think twice and kept going. When I was on my way back down, I saw it again and did a double take. What I thought I saw was super cliché, but a little five- to six-year-old girl in an 1800-style dress. When I did a double take, a flash of light shot straight up from the stump like the speed of a camera flash. Needless to say, my face went white and I ran inside as fast as possible. As a kid of like eight or nine years old, I loved sleeping in tents at my grandparents' house. One summer, I'd set up a tent in the field in front of their house, probably a thousand feet away. Something woke me up at like 3 a.m. As I lay there, being as quiet as possible, I hear this galloping noise off in the distance. I was completely frozen in fear as the galloping got louder and closer and louder. I could even feel it through the ground. It gets louder and louder and louder to the point where I swore I was about to be trampled. Just before running me over, it abruptly stops and there is complete silence again until something stuck its nose into the side of that tent and snorted. At this point, I was ready to die. After what felt like an eternity, it took off running and I could hear it galloping away. 
The next morning, I got up and told my grandparents about it. They thought I was making it up, and I don't think they ever believed me. I went and looked for tracks to prove it, but couldn't find any. It was obviously a horse, but whose horse, and where did it come from? There are no horse farms nearby. One night at around 1 a.m., my boyfriend sat straight up in bed suddenly. I was instantly startled awake. He was staring at the corner of the room, and I asked him what was wrong. He whispered, There's someone in the house. And then after a pause, They're standing in the corner. I was frozen with fear. I thought we were going to die, and I was madly thinking of what I would use as a weapon for my bedside table. After another pause, my boyfriend screamed at the top of his lungs, Get out! He then muttered, Oh, it's just a shadow. Lay back down and went straight back to sleep. I was so shaken up by the whole thing, I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. The next morning, he had no recollection of the event. That's all for today's episode of Miss Story Mysteries, creepy tales of mysteries and oddities from around the web. Please like and subscribe, and if you feel so inclined, please share with your friends and help build my audience as I grow my channel. I hope you'll join me again for the next episode. Until then, take care and stay spooky.